Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be looking at how we can use query parameters or query strings within our URLs in Flask. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a simple basic Flask application. I'll begin by saying from Flask. In this case I'm going to import Flask and then I'll create our app instance. So it's going to take in our Danda name as the import name and right after doing that we shall create a simple route with that app.route and within here we shall just provide our basic root URL and then I'll define a request handler function which I'm going to call request so this is going to return a simple plain text response of hello and then in this case we can say world so I'm simply going to go ahead and run this with uh, if name equals main then I'm going to simply run this server with that app.run actually it's going to be app.run and I'll give debug equals true so that you can be able to actually get our trace back so be able to get uh, what error that we may have at a certain point in the course of our development so I'm going to pull up our terminal and then run with python app.py so this will start our server and our server is actually going to run on localhost 5000. So I'm going to control and click on this link and this is going to lead us to our hello world or our root URL which is now working. So let's say we wanted to provide a query parameter within our URLs. So the way we do that is by using our request object that comes within Flask. So I'm just simply going to go back to our code. I'll close my terminal for now. And then I'll go ahead and import our request object. After importing our request object, now we're going to be able to access our query parameter using it. So let's say we want to provide a name as our query parameter. What we'll need to do is to access it using our request object. So before we do that, let's actually access all the query parameters within our URL. So I'm just going to create a variable called ax and this is going to be request.ax and what this is is simply a dictionary containing all the keys and the values that we provide as our query parameters. Now I'm simply going to print this for now and right after printing this then I'll go back to our Chrome and refresh so let's go ahead and see which kind of data this adds is. So we actually have, uh, we haven't actually done anything yet. So let's try to refresh. So in a refresh, you now see that it is a dictionary, but it's an immutable multi dictionary. So in this case, what we can do is to provide our first query parameter. Let me head over to Chrome right here. Oh, sorry for this. So when you go to Chrome, I'm going to provide our first query parameter as question mark and then I'll provide our name and let's say our name is going to be Jonathan. Now when you go back right here, we now see that our immutable multi-dict has a name which is the key as well as the value of Jonathan. Now let's say I wanted to provide another one. The way we do that is by just coming right within our URL and then you can provide and sign and then we give age and let's say age is 13 when you go back right here we can actually see that we now have a key of name and the value of Jonathan as well as the age of 13 which has a key of age all right so then this works is we have a dictionary containing keys and values now let's say I wanted to look over and be able to access these keys and values so I'll just close this and all I have to do in this case is to write a for loop. So in this case, I'll say for key and then value. In this case, we can access this in X. Now, since this is a dictionary, I'll use the items method on dictionaries and then go ahead and print the key as well as the value. So let's see what is actually going to happen. So I'll refresh here and then go back this side. And now what you can see is we are printing our name and our value. We are also printing our age as well as our value. This is interesting 
for now we can be able to actually access these query parameters so let's say we wanted to actually access specific query parameters that do not actually exist in this case so what you can do is to use if statements to check if those actual query parameters exist and by doing this we can do it using the keys for those query parameters so for example let's say we wanted to have a query parameter of nationality we can actually say if then we specify that key so in this case we can actually come and access the key which is actually a uh, nationality so we're going to just provide this uh, nationality and then we specify if it is in the keys or that specific args so in this case you can just come and say args and then since this is a dictionary can access keys then what we shall want to do in this case is to print the nationality so what i'll do in this case is to come and say uh, we shall just come and say print and then x the way we get to access a specific key is by using this syntax which is for a dictionary so we can just say name and you can also go ahead and say ax.get and then we can access the nationality so now go ahead and save now in this case our server is going to restart so when you head over back here and I refresh now since we don't have a nationality we don't expect anything but let's go ahead and provide that so i'm just simply going to copy this key right here actually just copy one and after copying it i'll go ahead and provide it within our url so here i'm just going to provide and and then i provide the nationality and let's say ugandan when I send this, we now see that's actually going to print our nationality. Now this is actually working. So this is the way we basically be able to access our query parameters as well as to provide values for our query parameters. If you've learned from this video, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And if you find this useful, you can also tell me about what you may want to learn about flask thank you for watching guys and see you in the next video bye